Wait, so maybe AI actually is on track to cure cancer after all? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. The joke over the last couple of weeks, first as OpenAI launched Sora, a short form video app, and then later as it announced that it would be opening up to adult uses of its platform, goes along the lines of we were promised great big cures for diseases and novel discoveries, and instead we got a new TikTok and a new place for porn. Major politicians even weighed in on this line of memeing, with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis saying so much for curing cancer and beating China, question mark. And yet, even as that discourse was happening, we got this announcement from Google Sundar Pichai. He writes, An exciting milestone for AI and science. Our C2S scale 27B foundation model, built with Yale and based on Gemma, generated a novel hypothesis about cancer cellular behavior, which scientists experimentally validated in living cells. With more preclinical and clinical tests, this discovery may reveal a promising new pathway for developing therapies to fight cancer. So today we're going to talk about first this particular discovery, and then more broadly how quietly behind all the hype and noise, there have been some really interesting advancements which suggest that the whole idea that AI can't make or contribute to novel discoveries in science may be one now for the junk heap of history. So back to this discovery from Google. In their announcement post, Google wrote, This announcement marks a milestone for AI in science. C2S scale generated a novel hypothesis about about cancer cellular behavior, and we have since confirmed its prediction with experimental validation in living cells. The implications, they say, are new pathways for developing theory therapies to fight cancer. Now, they explain that one of the biggest challenges in cancer therapy is that many tumors are, are quote-unquote cold. In other words, invisible to the body's immune system. A major strategy in cancer treatment, then, is triggering tumorous cells to make them turn hot, i.e. i.e. to display immune-triggering signals, in a process that's called antigen presentation. With this as background, researchers gave C2S scale a single task, to find a drug that functions as a conditional amplifier, in other words, to boost the immune signal only in specific circumstances. Previous iterations of similar models were not capable of achieving, of achieving this task, but C2S scale succeeded. The task effectively required a sort of conditional biological reasoning. They designed what they called a dual-context virtual screen, where they, one, provided the model with real-world patient samples with intact tumor-immune interactions and low-level interferon signaling, and then secondly provided the model with isolated cell line data with no immune context. Google then simulated the effects of over 4,000 drugs and asked the model to predict which would boost immune signals if only certain conditions were met. Now, this highlights one of the areas where we're seeing AI-enhanced science really flourish. AI models generally excel in situations where a large volume of experimentation is required. In other words, a big part of the value is about speeding through simulated experiments and crunching large data sets that would take human researchers and traditional computing methods much, much longer to sift through. After simulating those 4,000 drugs, the experiment found a set of drug candidates. Out of the drug candidates that the model highlighted, only 10 to 30% were already known in prior literature. The others had no prior link to the screen. Interestingly, the model made a core prediction on how the family of drugs would function, which it used to base its result. They wrote, What made this prediction so exciting was that it was a novel idea. The model was generating a new testable hypothesis and not just repeating known facts. Researchers then tested the hypothesis on actual cells and observed the predicted effect. The model seems to have correctly identified a new way of turning tumorous cells hot under the desired conditions. Google concluded, while this is an early first step, it provides a powerful experimentally validated lead for developing new combination therapies, which use multiple drugs in concert to achieve a more robust effect. This result also provided a blueprint for a new kind of biological discovery. It demonstrates that by following the scaling laws and building larger models like C2S scale 27B, we can create predictive models of cellular behavior that are powerful enough to run high-throughput virtual screens, discover context-conditioned biology, and generate biologically grounded hypotheses. One of the big implications here is that these larger science-specific models seem to actually have emergent capabilities in scientific reasoning, not just language-based reasoning. To the extent that this is a bitter lesson outcome, i.e. just the byproduct of a better, bigger, more dedicated model, that actually makes it more likely that this is a big unlock for future research rather than a one-off discovery. Basically, the implications of there being a general scaling law for scientific reasoning models is quite large. The reactions from many were excited. We got, of course, the jokes. Packy McCormick wrote, Everyone else, behold, an AI you can beat off to. Google DeepMind, protein folding, weather prediction, new materials, and now an AI that can make its own cancer discoveries. 
There was, however, some skepticism. Lenny Eusebi writes, A bit of a stretch to frame this is if they asked a chatbot to solve cancer and it spat out a novel idea. This is much more like they trained a narrow predictive model for a very specific task, and then it was able to do that task well enough to filter out a new candidate drug. Some version of this take is basically presented in every thread. The point, though, with this discovery is that the model demonstrated the ability to take a set of known facts about the science and synthesize them into a novel hypothesis that proved to be correct using reasoning. If you go look at these threads where inevitably this critique comes out, there are scientists who follow up, pointing out that there's really no such thing as scientific discovery created from whole cloth. Everything is built on the synthesis of existing ideas. Rob S. follows Lenny's post with, yes, that's how science is done. V.C. Hemant Mahaptra writes, I've always believed new knowledge can be one, built on existing knowledge but connecting the dots in unique ways, two, creating pure de novo knowledge through hypothesis experiments, etc. that might go against current thinking. LLMs are likely great at one, and that's where perhaps a vast majority of the net new knowledge lies. Even if LLMs as they stand today never get to number two, their impact on research will be tremendous. Now, what makes this story notable to me, even outside just the profound implications of AI actually being able to help us cure cancer, is that it is not an isolated story. For those who have been paying attention closely, and of course that's hard considering the absolute barrage of new models and crazy bubble talk and all those things going on, there have been a lot of these really subtle indicators that some big barrier has been surpassed. OpenAI's Kevin Wheel, who used to be their chief product officer but is now their VP of science, about a week ago tweeted, GPT-5 crossed a major threshold. Over the last two months, we've heard repeated examples of scientists successfully directing GPT-5 to do novel research in math, physics, biology, computer science, and more. Now, he clarified, I'm not claiming GPT-5 is ready to prove the Riemann hypothesis. It's more at the lemma stage today when, guided by an expert, it can do bounded chunks of novel science, things that would maybe have taken a professor on her postdoc a few days or a week to work through. But this is the beginning of accelerating science, because if each path takes a week, you can only explore so many of them. If it takes 20 minutes with ChatGPT Pro and you can run them in parallel, suddenly you can explore far more. And remember, the model you're using today is the worst it'll ever be for the rest of your life. The idea that ChatGPT could do novel science sounded crazy a year ago, but here we are. And by the way, this is not just Kevin speaking. Professor Ethan Malik wrote, I'm hearing similar things in economics and the social sciences. Not autonomous work, but expert-directed AI is absolutely helping academics do novel research in significant ways. One example that got a lot of conversation came from back in August. Sebastian Bubeck, a researcher at OpenAI, posted an academic mathematics problem to GPT-5, and it appeared to come up with a novel result. The problem was an extension of existing work, which Bubeck explained as, in smooth convex optimization, under what conditions, on the step size eta and gradient descent, will the curve traced by the function value of the iterates be convex? It's totally fine if that's gibberish to you, it is absolutely gibberish to me. The fact that you need to understand is that the original paper on Arvix found a general result if the eta is larger than 1.75 divided by L, where L is the smoothness of the curve. The paper also provided the result below 1 divided by L, so there was a remaining gap between 1 and 1.75. GPT-5 Pro appeared to produce a general result for 1.5 divided by L, reducing the lower bound of the solution. Bubek commented that this was, quote, definitely a novel contribution that would be worthy of a nice Arvix note. However, he continued, the only reason I won't post this as an Arvix note is that the humans actually beat GPT-5 to the punch. Namely, the Arvix paper has a V2 with an additional author, and they close the gap completely, showing that 1.75L is the tight bound. Still, he pointed out that GPT-5's proof was completely novel, commenting, The fact that it proves 1.5 divided by L and not the 1.75 divided by L proof also shows that it didn't just search for the V2. Also, GPT-5's proof is very different from the V2 proof. It's more of an evolution of the V1 proof. Shortly after Bubek published his results, Others at OpenAI chimed in that this wasn't the only novel academic work that GPT-5 was capable of. Chief Research Officer Mark Chen posted, GPT-5 Pro is starting to develop new mathematics. I'm hearing similar stories in other scientific domains like physics too. Now what's interesting about these math results is that as much as we are talking about AI's ability to generate new knowledge by synthesizing old knowledge as a pathway for medical and scientific discovery, this math result seems to be an emergent capability of reasoning models. In coming up with the proof, GPT-5 Pro thought for 17 minutes and then presented work that wasn't previously published. Then again, maybe we shouldn't be so surprised given recent performance. Both OpenAI and DeepMind entered LLMs in the International Math Olympiad this summer and were capable of gold medal performances. The notable thing is that these kinds of theoretical math problems have basically zero calculation. They're about manipulation of logic to come up with a mathematical proof. It's basically an entirely different category of scientific work. 
Former quant investor Jeffrey Emanuel highlighted another interesting novel math paper that required a lot of manual labor to come up with a result. In a long thread, he suggested that this could be an example of a hidden discovery, a novel result that was already feasible based on current knowledge but required too much work for a human to reasonably obtain as an individual or an academic team. Which gets us to another point. A recent article in Frontiers was called 90% of Science is Lost. And the broader point is that while modern science is about people with 20-year academic careers of extreme specialization, often the largest scientific breakthroughs are about combining observations across fields. A ton of the big discoveries of the 20th century were, for example, chemistry slash physics or biology slash physics. As Frontiers puts it, most scientific data never fuel the discoveries they should. For every 100 data sets created, around 80 remain in the lab. 20 are shared but rarely used, and only one typically drives new findings. The result? Delayed cancer treatments, climate models short on evidence, and research that cannot be reproduced. That is exactly the type of information that AI could be using and potentially putting to better efforts. Andrew Curran recently had an interesting post on Twitter where he wrote, We're in a strange spot right now with AI. The anti-AI crowd believes progress has halted and are doing a victory lap. Insiders at all labs maintain advancement continues at pace. Only one of these versions of reality will survive the new year. OpenAI's Aidan McLaughlin summed up the lab point of view in this tweet, 2024 evals, can it count letters, can it do college stuff, are its solutions diverse, 2025 evals, has it worked for 30 hours yet, has it increased GDP, has it discovered novel math, and yet, as we discussed in the headlines today, we're still at this point where the US ranks dead last among many large economies in how much it's concerned versus excited about AI. A full 50% of US citizens surveyed by Pew were more concerned than excited about AI. I tweeted that this is a depressing indictment about the state of our national psyche, that technology should be a beacon of better futures. Now, it's way beyond the scope of this particular show to get into all of the non-AI factors that I think show up in these numbers, but it's why it's so important to hold up and have conversations about this subtle ground shift that's happening right in front of our eyes. Even as these discoveries come up, we will certainly cover them here. For now, however, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.